All right, you guys, we're gonna have a busy two weeks because we are going to take this project from start to finish. This is an 11 foot tall retaining wall on a steep slope. We're gonna wrap this job up this week and then next week we're gonna dive into a patio that we're putting on top of this retaining wall. And we're gonna show you that series back to back to back. So you'll be able to watch this job go from where it's at to final completion without interruption. Yes, the grade's changing a little bit here. It's kind of starting to come downhill this way, and then this wall's too close. We're, we're shooting for a three to one in front of the wall. Um, so bury in the second block, and I don't want to trust anything that this is doing. Um, so we're gonna cut this out of here. It worked over there, but it's not working over here for, for me. Essentially, we're banking on this couple timbers holding the base blocks not gonna fly for a massive nine foot wall that's right. gonna be holding back an entire yard but once we get these timbers out of here then we can kind of see if we want to do a step down in this area or if we can get our get our three to one slope but these timbers need to be gone regardless all right i got the i got the saws all up there for you bud all right let's pop them all right, so let's talk about what we're doing at the base of retaining wall. When we have a really steep slope and we're gonna be building a retaining wall on that steep slope, we've gotta embed more of the retaining wall, meaning we've gotta get more of the blocks buried. So in this case, Tim wanted those timbers removed so that he could actually bury more of the base block. Uh, he got it right at the scene. So actually, yeah, yeah, here, look out of the way. He's gonna pull the stop one off for you. If he left those in place and those fell away, we may have one or two courses of block that should be buried exposed. The wall wouldn't fail by any means. He's just going above and above, over and above. You pry it with a shovel from this end and tip it up. Top or see if you get that off. Get her in the joint there and. Oh, he's, he's got some monster, he put some monster leg bolts in here. Yeah. So you don't even need to get through all the way on that bottom one. If you just get through most of the way, okay. he, can, he can snap it. And today's video is brought to you by our friends from LMN Software. These guys help me be able to free up my time to make videos that help you guys out. What Tim is doing right here is he's actually base, basing a step up. And so to base a step up, this is where instead of stepping the slope down, we're stepping it up. We actually put one block on top of another block. So we have two blocks equal to each other. And what that does is that allows us to keep all of our courses aligned. Now when you're building an engineered retaining wall, one of the most critical things that you've got to nail is the geogrid. And the geogrid, if you look right here, is that black mesh-like fabric that lays horizontally behind the retaining wall. That geogrid locks into the face of the retaining wall, and what it does is it holds the face of the retaining wall to, with all of the soil behind it so that everything then moves as one mass. see that on this slope we're burying three courses. Two courses are getting buried right here but further down the line you can see where an actual third course was buried.
So if you look, you'll see us dry stacking the wall and we can actually dry stack the wall about four courses before we're forced to backfill it. And what we do is we can flip, we put the grid down and then we stack, stack, stack. And then we flip the grid up, we pack, 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 put the grid down at the appropriate level, then continue to pack until we get to our four courses before we wash, rinse, and repeat that same process over again. That's a little trick we use to speed up the process. you'll see that we're installing drain tile into the retaining wall but if you ever drive by a retaining wall and you see the drain tile actually operating it means that that wall is in a state of failure they see on modular retaining walls like this they are a mortarless system intentionally and we use a lot of drainage aggregate and you're gonna see that in just a moment but the entire retaining wall is designed to allow water to flow freely right through the face of it. So if you ever actually see the water being funneled or jetted out through the drain tile at the bottom, it means whatever company installed that retaining wall didn't put enough drainage aggregate in or that drainage aggregate that may be in place is boogered up and not operating. So either way, if you've seen drain tile operating in a modular retaining wall, something is wrong. That's a big red flag. So on this project, we ended up bringing in about 45 dump truck loads of structural fill soil. And instead of showing you each and every load going in, we just thought we'd show you what it looked like so you could get a gist of what we're using. And that is a granular material with a clay binder in it, which allows us to pack it up tight like concrete. Yeah, so now, now he's got to get in there and mi mix it all together so that we can get it to pack. So more than one of you guys have asked me, Stan, what do you think of the ASV versus the CAT versus the Kubota? And here's the breakdown. We love the cab on the Kubota, hands down, love that swing up door. But the CAT has buttery smooth controls, but the ASV, when it comes to just sketchy slopes, that's the machine that the guys go to. So that right there is a really sketchy move. There's zero tolerance. When a skid loader is gonna fall over, it'll tip over sideways, but it'll also likely tip forward. And as he's coming down the slope, especially with weight in the bucket, all of the weight of that machine is now transferring forward. And when you're driving down to a retaining wall, if that machine decides to go forward, typically you can just catch yourself with your bucket. But when you have a retaining wall and you're coming right up to the edge of it, a lot of times if your machine falls forward, 
the bucket will fall over the face of the retaining wall, putting the operator in a really jeopardizing situation. So although it doesn't look like much on film, a good operator knows that that right there is a sketchy place to be and these guys have learned to trust on that ASV. They've gotten that machine dialed in and they know exactly where its capabilities are. So when it comes to sketchy slopes, that's why these guys migrate to this machine. We're going to use up probably all this dirt today, huh? Yeah, that's, that's like good. save some for this over the weekend. we got to be able to backfill this all up and protect it if I get something in. Yep. Something's got to get in though. Where did that come from? So what they're doing right here is prepping a geogrid zone. And prepping a geogrid zone means they're going to flatten it out so that they can pack it, so that they can fold the geogrid down and then put more dirt over the top of it. We go with very thin lifts because this allows us to see what material is actually going in place. Big rocks aren't allowed. Things like whatever that was we found earlier is not allowed. Roots get pulled out. Anything that doesn't look structural gets yanked. And then as we get real close to the wall, we use two different compactors. In the drainage zone, you'll see that we're using the 150 pound plate packer because it's not going to shift the wall up. And then in the reinforcement zone, we switch over and we use our big packer. So here he's packing the reinforcement zone with our bigger packer. You'll also notice that we typically use the same block on every one of our products, and that's the VersaLock standard unit. And the reason we use that is simply put, it is the only solid block on the market that is also pin. And that gives us just the confidence knowing that we're getting a good solid connection from one block to the next. Now you'll have options with blocks and I want you guys just to kind of put your, just, just to put it on your radar screen to know how blocks actually physically connect together. A lot of blocks don't have pins and what happens is they rely on gravity and weight to stick together. And sometimes they'll have a little tiny lip that runs along the back side of those blocks. You can go to any one of the big box stores and flip a block up and you'll see that little lip. And what that lip does is that lip provides uh, this, the connection so that the block can't slide up and over. So there'll be a, if this is the, the block and then there's a block underneath it, this block will slide, hit this block, that lip will stop it. But what happens if that lip comes off? There's nothing. So now these two blocks just are having a slip and slide over the top of each other. And those lips do come off. Those lips come off with just nothing much heavier than something like this. We call it a chipping hammer. So when we want to knock that lip off intentionally, when we got to use those blocks for base, we take a little chipping hammer and we just go tap, 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 tap along the back of the block and the lip shatters right off. And now we've got a flat block on the bottom that we can base with. And it was when I came to the realization one day as I was tapping that back of that block off to base with them that this might not be the best connection method when I'm starting to build walls that are 9, 11, 15, 25 feet tall. And that's when I started to, uh, I first used the VersaLock standard units and I've been sold ever since. I, it is, in my book, 
they have not improved upon the design and I've been using these same blocks for 20 some years. But we've got a lot more video coming down the pipeline. We're going to be tackling a very tricky corner coming up and we're going to wrap this entire project out. And this project actually grows from 9 feet to 11 feet. And then we're going to be adding a patio on top of it. So we're also going to have a surcharge placed on top of this retaining wall. And this entire wall has actually been designed to actually take if we wanted to add on to the wall, we could. And if we want to place a surcharge on it, we could. We actually designed it ahead of time just in case those two things came up. And on this job site, actually, both of those things came up. They weren't in the initial contract, but by the time we finished up this portion of the project, they became part of our initial, but they became an add-on to our contract. And you're going to see this. We're going to finish this entire job out. You, there's not going to be any disruptions, you guys. It's going to be one after another, after another, after another, coming right down the pipeline so that you guys can see this job in its entirety. And the only reason you're not seeing it back when we started this project about a month ago is because we had a lot of change orders, we had a lot of add-ons, and we weren't able to wrap this job up in a timely fashion to make these videos come out in that order. So we put that the videos on pause so that we could bring deliver them all to you one after another. So get ready for that, you guys. It's coming down the pipeline. Hit that thumbs up button. God bless you guys and go get them. We'll see you on the next one and the next one and the next one and the next one. I think there's going to be six. Six in total. See you on there.